Oh, hello internet. Well, here I am again on my trip. Kind of annual trip. This is my first longer trip for this year. And um, I started yesterday. It was kind of transit day. No video about that. No photos, but uh, uh, yeah, it was dull and hot riding all day long. I rode uh, something like 450 kilometers from Finland and uh, I end up here in Sweden, Lappea, Suon, the northern part of Sweden. It's a familiar place for me to stay overnight because I was here a couple of years ago, something like that. Still this place is uh, nice and quiet and uh, there's all amenities you like to have. Uh, breakfast is available and uh, restaurant and so forth. So. I was planning uh, today's trip in the middle of my riding and uh, photographing kit and gear and uh, today's goal is uh, in Norway so I'm going to ride something like uh, 480 kilometers. I will tell you later about that one when I'm on, on, on my bike riding towards Norway and uh, telling you about this weather which is uh, kind of exceptional weather in the uh, northern part of uh, Sweden, Finland, Norway. I'm starting with the breakfast and uh, then I'm packing rest of my stuff and uh, I hit the road. The hotel I stayed at is 60 kilometers south of Kiruna, right next to the highway. It's a great place if you want a quiet night and restaurant food and of course a buffet breakfast. After packing my things, I headed north towards Sweden's most famous base city, Kiruna. As I was on the road early, the day's heat was not yet there. The roads were quiet, with only the local ore trucks and a few cars on the road. As I was on my first long journey on my Ural sidecar motorcycle, I had yet to get used to its fuel consumption and refueling intervals. I had fitted a 10 liter spare tank before setting off so I could continue if necessary, even if the tank was empty. However, there are several petrol stations in the town of Kiruna, so I planned a convenient place to refuel the bike and take a short coffee break while driving. After all, it was already well into the morning when I arrived in Kiruna. When in Sweden, try to find petrol station. There's uh, many of those, and uh, then there will you find uh, Kanel Bulle. This is cinnamon bun, and uh, maybe coffee also. These are ingredients uh, for a great break. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> Trip humor. Okay, quite nice place. I stopped for a short pause and uh, make some videos, aerial photography <laughs> with my drone. Uh, you will see, I'll show you. There's not so much uh, mosquitoes here. Also some uh, light breeze and uh, 21 degrees or something like that. So it's uh, real summer here, even though I can see these uh, uh, snow-capped mountains over the lake there, but uh, I guess that uh, it's the permanent uh, snow there. So, it's uh, time for me to hit the road again and uh, continue this trip. So, see you soon! After a short break, I continued my journey towards the border with Sweden and Norway. Before reaching the border area, I passed a large lake called Tornetresk. On its shore is a village called Abisko, 
from where there are hiking trails to Abisko Nature Park. In summer, the village is crowded with hikers who want to experience the park's hiking trails. After a few kilometers from Abisko village is the next one, the village of Riksgrensen, which is also the northernmost ski resort in Sweden. And it's located on the border. The village is only six kilometers from the Atlantic Ocean. I have always admired the spectacular change of scenery from the fells to the ocean fjord. A short distance away, the road drops hundreds of meters and suddenly a fjord opens up in front of you. Often the highlands cooler air also warms considerably as you descend to the seashore. The fjord I descend on is Ofot fjord, also known as Narvik fjord. It's a 78 km long fjord with a rich and sometimes dark history. It was the scene of several naval battles during the Second World War, and many battleships sunk at the bottom of the fjord. The E6 highway winds along the fjord over bridges, and there's also a ferry crossing from Skarberget to Bognes. The road then continues southwards through smaller fjords and the highlands between them. In the late afternoon I reach a town called Fauske. There I found a campsite with a great view. I spent a peaceful night there in my own cabin, which was clean and well located. <laughs> 